So, completely different shift now. Now we get into a little logic. And uh, this will tend to be a little bit easier for some of you. Um, you won't find this too bad. Uh, that first box, and to keep in mind, has some pointers for you right off the start. Uh, it talks about types of notation that you need to get used to for this. This is a uh, fairly easy uh, section in terms of, of not being uh, not a lot of math, like uh, heavy math, just some more uh, thinking, some more logic. Most of you, this is what applied is for, is this type of uh, this work. Uh, you can represent a set of elements. Okay, so these are important for you. There's a number of ways in which we can show a set of elements. Listing the elements is the first. So to list elements, so put them all in there in squiggly brackets. Squiggly brackets will be a new friend. You have to use squiggly brackets for everything here. Using words or a sentence, for example, so if A is equal to 6, 7, 8, 9, Okay, we can use words to represent that. All integers greater than 5 and less than 10. So, using words. All integers greater than 5, less than 10. Uh, we can use set notation. such that um, five less than x less than ten, where x is an element of the integers. So we've done some notation like that. Uh, you can show how sets and their subsets are related using Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams do not usually show the relative sizes of the <coughs> sets. Sets are equal if they contain exactly the same elements, even if the elements are listed in different orders. You can indicate the number of elements in set A using the notation N of A. So this notation right here, that is the amount of values in that set. So looking back at the other one, there were four. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that's what that notation means. You may be able to count all the elements in a very large or infinite set. You may not be able to count them in a very large or infinite set, <coughs> such as a set of all real numbers. The sum of the number of elements in the set and its complement is equal to the number of elements in the universal set. So n of a, so all of them in the set plus all of them not in the set. This little line right here, this little dash means not in that set. Okay is equal to all of them in the universe. Okay, so I'll, I'll explain that to you a little bit better in a second when we start looking at Venn diagrams. Okay, when two sets are disjoint, they contain no common elements. So two sets disjoint, sloppy writing, disjoint means that there are no common elements in the two sets, even numbers and odd numbers, an example. So set, of a, set A is all the even numbers, and set B is all the odd numbers. There's, no, there's nothing that overlaps in those numbers. So they're disjoint. All right? Uh, if something's a subset, Uh, S is a subset of A. That means that everything that's in S is also in A. But A may have more than, than what's covered. Okay? So that's a subset. So there's just little notation things. Actually, they don't use, sorry. We're not going to use the E. We're going to use this. It's kind of a elongated C. It's on the next page. It's on 63. Uh, what else did I want to tell you about this? Oh, we should go through our number system. Okay, so the number system, we have uh, natural, 
wall. Integers, real. What is the natural number system? Say again. Greater than zero. All whole numbers greater than zero. Right? So <laughs> one, two, three, four, and so on, right? No zero, no decimals. Whole numbers. Say again. Um, positive numbers without decimals? Sorry? It's, yeah. it's any number. <coughs> including zero? Including zero? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Same thing. The only difference is that. Whole numbers include zero. Now, Jules, integers. <laughs> No decimals, that's right. So that that includes this too. So now we're including the now we're including the uh, negatives. And real numbers. Everything. <coughs> All of them. Decimals included. Okay? So if I were to draw a Venn diagram of this, it would look something like this. Natural, <coughs> whole, integers, real. Not all real numbers are natural numbers, <coughs> but all natural numbers are real numbers. So you always work within the diagrams if you work from the inside to the out. So naturals are whole, whole, <coughs> integers, integers, all of them are in the real system. Okay? Okay so far? Yes. Indicate the multiples of 4 and 8 from 1 to 400 inclusive using set notation and noting any subsets. Also represent the sets and subsets in a Venn diagram. Okay. So what is a subset? Okay, so a set is all of the numbers that are included in what's been asked of you. So but I'm going to explain it using the example that will make more sense to you, okay? So indicate the multiples of 4. So all the way to 400, what would it look like? 4, 8, 12, 16, 24, right? And then what? 396 and 400. So that would, that would give me all the all of the <coughs> multiples of 4 from 1 to 400. Agree? Yeah. So far, so good? I, I went one ahead here. Sorry. I should have done this. My bad. There's my 4s. Okay, so there's my multiples of 4. The universal set from 1 to 400 is every number from 1 to 400. Okay? So, to explain the question that Emma asked, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to 400. To explain the question that we just asked, what is a subset? Okay, the universal set contains all values, right? The multiples of 4 are only partial values out of that whole collection, correct? So, therefore... 4 is a subset of the U, right? Because only parts of this one are in this. So it's considered a subset of that. So if I said all even numbers, that would be a subset of the universal as well. All odd numbers, all multiples of 4. Okay? That's what a subset is. It's, it's a smaller set of the bigger numbers. Does that make sense? Like, and it has to include them? It has to include, they have to be included in both. Yes. No. F stands for four. Multiples of four. What do you think E stands for? Even. 
Side of the circles. I put a I put a square around it. Okay? And this is how I draw the I, a Venn diagram. I put a square around it and then hey, uh, and then I've got my E and my F. What's wrong? All it's doing is just showing you your understanding of whether or not you can do you understand what a subset is. Right? The non-multiples of four, they would be out in your universe out here, right? <laughs> because, well, they, they call it a universal set, right? Because it, it's implying that everything is contained inside here, just like everything is in the universe. So in math, they refer to your universal set. So all multiples of anything are in this universal set as long as it's between 1 and 400. Because <coughs> I've designated... 1 to 400 as my universal set for this question. Go ahead. No, because I've done that right here. So the, when you're writing these things out, all right, this helps to prove your situation in terms of subsets. Okay, but realistically, this is the information that you want. Now, if you look in the book, there's also a way we could write this with symbols, okay? So your universal set, I'll start with it, x such that it's all values between 1 and 400. Am I including decimals in this? No. So I can either write this as x is an element of whole, natural would work for this as well, correct? And realistically, integers would work as well, right? They all work because I'm talking just about the whole numbers here. So it doesn't matter. And I, no, because I've, I've specified it's between 1 and 400, all right? So therefore, that, that means then that it can be any of them, all right? In this case, because they start with 1, they refer to it as a natural number. All right, so now, F is F such that F is equal to 4 times X. All right, so here's all my X numbers. My X numbers are 1 to 400. Oh, I get it. Okay. So starting with 1, starting with 1, less than x is less than or equal to. Or equal to. What's it? 100. 100. Oh. Yeah. Morgan, I want you downstairs. 
first. So why is it 100, Garrett? <coughs> because I, I'm multiplying the value by 4, right? Okay. So then, and then x is an element of natural again, right? Okay, so let's do 8 now without looking at it. 8, e is equal to? 8x. 8x. And then 1. That's right. Why is it 50? 50 times 8 is? 400. And that's as high as my natural number to go in my universal set. Okay? Alright, so back to the Venn diagram for one sec <coughs> to show that I have subsets I simply do this E is a subset of F <coughs> which is a subset of universal E is a subset of F is a subset of the universal Are all of F in E? No. No. <laughs> Got it. All right. Okay. All right. Let's look at 66. Unless there's any other questions. Okay. What is a disjoint set again? What? No common element. <laughs> no common element. So nothing, nothing is uh, shared. Yeah. So if it's disjoint, then it doesn't have any subsets. That's right. Okay. Okay. Sets that are not <coughs> disjoint share common elements. When drawing and looking at a Venn diagram, keep the following in mind: each region of the diagram represents something different. Each element in a universal set appears only once. An element that occurs in more than one set goes in the region where the sets containing the element overlap. To count the elements in non-disjoint sets, count the elements in each region just once. All right, so I read a bunch of stuff really fast. Okay, let's look at an example. The best way I can show you to work with a Venn diagram is to just show a simple example, and then we work through. When you do a Venn diagram, you always start with the commonality with what is in common what do, does each share okay so Chantel asked 36 people at a senior citizens residence what type of the movie they liked with the results shown she wants to use the data to answer these questions how many people like mystery or comedy or both how many people like mystery only or comedy only and draw a Venn diagram to show the data okay so, I have a total of 36 people, and it says that number of people <coughs> who like mystery is 20 out of 36. Number of people that like comedy, 15. <coughs> number of people that don't like either one is 6. So let's add those together and what do I get? Should, right? 36, because I interviewed 36. But what is the actual answer? How many people are there? 41. 41. So what does that tell us then? That some, some of them like both, right? So the first thing I do is I add it up. I find out that I've got 20, 16, and 5 make 41. Okay, so now we have to determine from this. So I've got the number of people asked. I got to subtract the six because I also have to find out <laughs> how many are left over that didn't like any. Right. So I take thirty-six and I subtract the thirty. Sorry, not the thirty. I subtract the six that don't like either. So now I've got thirty. So far, so good. Now, 
How many like comedy? 15. How many like mystery? One. So how many is that total? So 35, right? Out of the 30, like comedy and mystery. So then how many of them must like both? Five. So I go 35, subtract 30, which gives me five. That's how many like both. So what I do then is I do this. Mystery, comedy, draw my box. That should have everybody in it. Okay. So how many like both? Five. Five. So if five like both, how many like just mystery then? <coughs> Fifteen. Because I just simply subtract that. And how many like just comedies? <coughs> Ten. And how many don't like either? Six. They go out there. There's my Venn diagram. So then the answer to the question is how many like just mystery? Fifteen. How many like just comedy? Ten. How many like both? Five. And how many preferred neither? Six. Six. There's a simple Venn diagram that answers all those questions in this. Okay? Um, this is a very simple little process here. Basically, what you're going to end up doing is copying down two examples. You'll copy down two examples and you'll follow them through. This is an easier one because I only have two circles. We're going to get into using three circles. And that's it. And it's not, it isn't, it really isn't complicated. And it's, they're puzzles now. You're doing puzzles to just solve answers for questions. There's no mathematic process here outside of the type of reasoning you're using. And all you need to do is, is uh, solve for it. Okay? That takes you through three one and three two. You guys don't like any math. It doesn't matter what I give you. Like, this is completely different than what we just did. Well, you give me two plus two, I'll be happy. You what? Two plus two, I'll be just the happiest little gal forever. You can do mental math. You'll be little. Oh, hard on the mental math. I think we should honestly do mental math. It is mental math. No, but I want. You're not using your calculator to add twenty and sixteen and five. Yes. Yeah. 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 I know the one. Maybe the two. We did something similar to this in grade eleven. Our logic unit in grade eleven was very similar to what you're going to do here. Okay. All right. Well, great. Okay. 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 Okay.